So in this session, we're looking at seven uh, amazing simple tips really to actually change your and help your headshot photography. Uh, whether you're just getting going uh, or you're a seasoned pro, uh, headshot photography isn't very difficult, uh, but there are some kind of simple tips and tricks that you can use to really make the subject look a lot better, make your images stand out a lot more and so on with it. So without delay, let's get into tip one, which is keep the posing simple. Now, even though for the majority of headshot photography, basically you're photographing above uh, the nipple, so you're basically cropping off through the bust or with a guy exactly, exactly the same, um, there's going to be times when you're um, adding more of the torso into the image, especially if you're offering a variety of services in your headshot photography, which include like a portfolio element, whether you're shooting in studio or shooting on location. Um, no matter what, uh, the posing should be kept to a minimum. So as far as the headshot photography is concerned, um, I would avoid from photographing the shoulder square on I would just turn the shoulders a fraction to one side or the other. With a man, we tend to turn the body towards the light a little. And with a woman, we turn the shoulders away from the light a little. The head comes back into the centralization, of course. Um, as far as um, things like arms, if we need to kind of shape the body more, um, obviously crossing the arms, which will be just out of shot if you're doing a pure head and shoulders kind of headshot photography, will basically create more of a bust. If you're um, popping the arms or the hands behind the back, you'll find that you'll basically stretch the body out wider as well. So be careful what you're doing. Um, quick tip as far as the hands concerned, if you need to actually get a little bit more of a relaxed element, um, just pop them into the pockets, uh, leave uh, the thumbs out. So even though they're going to be cropped out in, in all of the shots and things, yeah, especially if we're just doing the headshot photography, by kind of placing the hands in the pockets, you know what is being done with them and you can control the kind of the shape of the shoulder drop or the, el uh, the elbow turn in towards the middle. But um, if you're following the headshot photography on, as I said, for more of a portfolio kind of use, uh, I definitely uh, download our posing app uh, free of charge on the Academy um, to kind of give you some ideas on uh, how you can kind of ensure that you're going to get good, simple portrait photography that is going to make your client look a lot better. When I use the word simple, I'm not on about the simplicity, anybody sit there, take a shot. I'm on about just a quick animation, refining of the body pose so you can really make a difference to the client in front of you. Number two uh, is always shoot their best side. Uh, basically, uh, as I kind of just start to get going within the shoot, I'll photograph, um, fir first of all, one side of the face, then actually a kind of a full face towards camera. And then I'll just lightly turn the head in the opposite direction as well and shoot the opposite side. Then I'll kind of have a little look with my experience now and you'll get there. You'll basically know which you feel is the client's best side anyway. But I always kind of discuss that with the client right at the beginning so I can concentrate on what they feel is their best side. Remember, they see themselves reflected in a mirror. So often what we think, if they say, oh, I prefer this side, in fact, they might be kind of referring to a reflected image. So um, I always like to actually shoot, as I said, a slight turn uh, to each side and then a full face, and then we discuss it. Somebody with a very, very wide jawline will really help if you turn the face towards the side. Somebody with a large nose, like me, all right, uh, needs to make sure that we always keep the nose within the turn of the face. We don't want to turn it too far because that will actually make the nose look a lot bigger as it cuts through the line of the cheek as you turn the head away. So as far as the shooting the best side is concerned, um, obviously make sure that you're kind of uh, simulating the lighting that you would use when you actually turn the head from one side to another. Those couple of minutes that you spend right at the beginning will make a difference, I promise you, during the rest of the shoot. My tip three is to use a soft light rather than a very hard light. Remember, this is uh, all about the kind of the first stage of the headshot photography. If we're doing um, more of a portfolio shoot and so on with it, yes, we're going to be used different qualities of light. But if I was you, I would use around about a meter size softbox as a minimum and I would use double diffusion if possible. If you're using the likes of an umbrella, 
uh, that has a reflected light, so it can be quite soft as well. But I would try and um, uh, use a white internal umbrella, and then I would also use an outer diffusion layer if possible. If you haven't got an umbrella box, as it were, so in other words, the umbrella shape, reflected light, but then you haven't got the material on the outside, then you can actually kind of use material from a, a soft box that you might have, an old, old one, and you'll be able to actually kind of just pin that uh, with some uh, kind of little grips on the outside of the umbrella, and that'll do the job for you as well. Uh, as far as the soft box is concerned, um, I prefer to use the edge of the light rather than a directional light. Um, the edge of the light, so in other words, the light is kind of coming across the face instead of turned and directly shining onto the face itself. And by using the edge of the light, so as the softbox just in front of them and it's kind of directed straight across, this gives a lovely, lovely quality of light or almost an extra softness to the light. Plus the uh, uh, reflection uh, of the kind of the far side of the softbox will bounce and fill around on this side. Obviously, we tend to use a reflector underneath the subject as well to just give that extra kind of kick of the light coming underneath the chin. Speaking about chins, um, again, what we want to do is to make sure where possible, we're either photographing from uh, around about above the eye line. This allows them to kind of pick up their chin anyway, or you get them to kind of just lean forward and stretch forward with the chin. Um, I, like many, kind of suffer with multiple chins, and I definitely don't want to have extra chins within the photograph. So that stretching of the chin, uh, if you've got somebody with a lot of chins like me, basically lean them onto a tabletop, um, preferably if they can stand up, it's better for the body, especially if you're a, a big per person like me, uh, better to actually stretch the whole body. Remember, when you sit a subject down, it compresses the torso, compresses all the kind of the weight of the body into folds and it's a lot more comfortable if the subject can stand. So if you're leaning the subject onto a tabletop and they're stood up, um, that will naturally bring a lean in. Just stretch the chin out a little bit more and then you'll basically help all of these chins. Shoot from a slightly higher ang angle as well and you'll almost eliminate all the extra chins uh, like me. Okay, uh, fourth one is uh, create shadow. Uh, I mentioned about um, having the light uh, coming from one side and feathering the light, so in other words, going in front of them. Uh, what I want to do, if the light is coming from um, my right side, it's going to kind of try and create a small shadow then uh, on the opposite side of the, sub, uh, the subject's face. Remember, um, as a rule, I would encourage you to have the softbox high enough so when it points down, okay, when the light comes on, it will drop a shadow down towards the edge of the lip on the opposite side. You don't want a shadow that is going straight across the face because it just looks weird and it gives a misshapen face as well with it. So create shadow, but control those shadows. Remember as well that different people's eyes are different depth. They're sunken back. So there are times where the light has got to be a little bit lower uh, to actually kind of get in towards those eyes. But if you follow the stretching the chins technique, you'll usually find that you're lifting the chin a little bit and any light that is from above will actually go into the sockets of the eyes no matter what. You definitely don't want to end up with a panda eye, a shadowed eye and things really, which can look terrible. I like to separate the subjects. That's my tip six. Um, and I tend to separate the sub subject with a separation light um, and a background light. So um, as a kind of a main tip, when you're using a separation light onto a background, you want to create the brightest light is be between the shoulder blades and not behind the uh, the neck or the head, because otherwise you get a, a, a very kind of um, ho holy style of separation light onto the background, a biblical sense as it were. Uh, whereas what we're trying to do is actually just give them a separation. So if you pointed a small light, a speed light, uh, strobe flash, whatever, onto the background. So behind the sub subject pointing towards the background, um, basically it will be around about in the middle of the back. Then, of course, the light is allowed to kind of vignette out and that's going to give you the, uh, the kind of the better effect. As far as separation light is concerned, um, that will kind of come in from either the one or the two o'clock position. If my light is at the four o'clock position high, as it were, then my separation light, I should say my main light, 
is at the four o'clock position, then my separation light will usually be at the two o'clock or the 10 o'clock position coming back towards the sub uh, the subject's head. And I would uh, reduce the um, light power down compared to the main exposure uh, by around about a stop and a half to two stops, uh, especially when you're working with blonde hair or an oil, oily black hair, you definitely don't want all that white to actually kind of just disappear out. Remember, there is a, an expression that says the light from behind is twice as bright. So as it hits a reflected surface, it increases its exposure by twice the amount. So a light that was measured at f8 coming from behind would actually, as it hits the sub uh, the subject's skin or hair, increase its uh, luminosity, its brightness by around about two stops. But I would always try and separate the subject where possible. And then number seven, fingers crossed, it, it doesn't go without saying, headshots is all about expression, expression, expression. Now, if you haven't um, met the client before, if you haven't photographed the client ever before, then you're going to need to get to know that client um, and you're going to have to shoot probably a lot more images. Uh, I do come from the days of film, which means that, you know, a subject coming in would be like one roll of film or three rolls of film if we're on 120. Uh, on the Hasselblad or if we're shooting 35 mil for the likes of can uh, councils or big organizations, uh, then we'd basically just be doing like half a dozen images, choo uh, choo choosing the best. With digital, I would make sure that you're running through a variety of expressions no matter what. Even if a client says, look, I really don't like my smile or whatever it is, minimize those images, but try and get that expression through a nat natural chatter, especially if they're actors and singers, we need to bring character out. If the kind of the headshots or for somebody just getting a job, uh, they change move position, they're looking for a new job or could even be for a dating site, then of course, you know, they're, they're looking for something a little bit more full on front of face, eye to camera contact. Whereas if we're uh, kind of creating a variety of images for an actor, it's probably their manager uh, who's going to be choosing the best photographs anyway. Um, but expression, 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 you've got to shoot variety no matter what. And uh, e even though I will always follow my client's lead, I will basically add variety into the shoot no matter what. Hope you've enjoyed those seven tips. Uh, watch out for some more on the Academy.